Encourage yourself with verbal affirmations while you do your cosplay makeup. Oh, I'm doing great. Oh, I'm gonna look so fine. I'm going to be the best trophy husband. I believe in my Zhongli abilities. Today is gonna be my first time doing like a getting into cosplay stream. I've never done that before, but I really wanted to like try out the Zhongli cosplay, which you can see hanging out behind me. To do that, I need makeup and to style my wig. And the wig, literally, I haven't even removed it from its bag yet. Like this is the wig. <laughs> so so that's, that's, that's where we're at. For my first makeup base, I usually will use this mint colored, the Face Shop makeup base. It's called Air Cotton, I think. And I use the mint one because it cancels out the redness on my face. And then I use my Misha number 27 is my shade, BB cream. This is the holy grail BB cream, y'all. If, if you are not sure where to start with BB creams, I would 100% start with Amisha. I use a concealer stick from Innisfree. This is the mineral stick concealer. I'm sure y'all have heard this makeup tip lots of times, but make sure you pat your concealers in when they're under your eye because the skin here is very delicate. Don't want to stretch it out. So since it's cosplay, I'm gonna contour. I will shill this contour stick to the ends of the earth, guys. This is the 3CE contour stick. So you can see it's like dual sided. There's like a dark side and then there's a lighter side. There's something about the tone of the brown here that just makes sense. Like usually I get these kinds of things and it shows up like orange on my face, like the shading doesn't look right. This contour stick I actually can use. Skincare routine too. Hot Ice Cube, I don't really do skincare because I react really badly to skincare products. My skin is so sensitive that I most skincare products will just break me out. I can do makeup because most of it, like makeup at least doesn't try to, like it doesn't emulsify, it doesn't break into your skin in any way. It just kind of sits on top of it. Skincare stuff is designed to like penetrate your skin. <laughs> and do stuff to it. And I do not respond well to that. So the only thing that has really worked for me is I wash my face with water and then I moisturize with like a CeraVe moisturizer because that has the least irritants in it. I'm also moisturizing pretty effectively. And then I use Curology. I use like a really, really gentle Curology formula that has almost nothing in it, but it does just the trick. I guess I often contour after powdering, but I'm so shiny today. Do you guys see this? I'm a naturally very shiny, like I'm combination type skin, but I produce oil like nothing else. Are you guys being sold to Curology? I'm not sponsored by anyone yet, guys. I'm not, I'm not cool enough to be sponsored by, by corporate entities just yet, just yet. Just yet. Psych, this is Ying from one month later. It turns out that I was cool enough to get a corporate sponsorship. So I'm excited to announce the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. So for those of you who don't already know what Skillshare is, it is an online learning community for creatives. They've got thousands of classes on topics like design, photography, video, like you name it, they've got it. It's just basically a great learning platform for curious learners of all levels to learn something new. I'm actually a proud new plant parent. You can see a few of my babies behind me here. And let me also show you some of the new budding babies around the house. I'm very excited for these new additions to my household. So I'm currently checking out Plants at Home, which is a class taught by Christopher Griffin. They are a Brooklyn-based black queer femme, plant enthusiast, and also community builder. And I love their energy so far. I often joke that I live in a wine cellar. It faces Northeast. I get almost no sunlight here. So I have to be really careful about what plants I get and also what lighting to set up for them, you know? And I'm just really glad that Christopher walks us through all of that. Skillshare is a platform that was really curated specifically for learning. So there are no ads and there's constantly new premium classes being added. So you can really follow the creative flow of your impulses or your hyperfixations if you have ADHD like me. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description, we got a special little linky down there for you. You will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. How's that for my first sponsored segment, guys? I'm really proud of myself and I hope you're proud of me too. Anyways, back to the content of the video. Let's get into that Zhongli cosplay, yeah? <laughs> All right, so skin is done. Usually cosplayers put their contacts in before they do their eye makeup, but I often do it after because I get restricted vision when I put contacts in first. I just like get a halo of color and I can't see properly. So I do it last. You're super not supposed to. You're super supposed to put it in first. I think it's safer for your eye. It's cleaner and everything. Then that's what you should do. But in my case, that's just what I, I gotta cope somehow. So I think I'm going to use my Give It To Me Straight ColourPop eyeshadow palette. I love all the warm tones in it and the shimmers. One of my favorite things is actually this Misha brush cleaner. It has like a sponge thing here. And then if you just like whirl your thing around it a bit, it'll pretty much clean off everything on it. So no more like trying to wipe off your eye shadow brushes on like wet wipes or whatever. Don't do that. Just, just use this dry sponge thing and like go a few times, you know? For crossplay, I don't usually curl my lashes very much, but I think I will do that. So in preparation for that, I'm going to, this is one of my hacks, guys. You guys ready? One of my life hacks. You ready? Shove your mascara in your bra. Non-bra havers, I'm sorry, but if you wear a bra and you got boobas and the boobas are warm, put that mascara in there, okay? Do you know why? It's 
because it clumps less when it's warm. So when you shove it in here, it has time to warm up while you do the rest of your makeup. And then when you're ready to use it, it's, it's warmed up, it's less clumpy, you get more like fluffy looking eyelashes. It's great, this is such a hack, it's my favorite hack. All these makeup stuffs look way more complicated than having a Duolingo test. It's true, Duolingo is nothing compared to makeup, especially cosplay makeup. I picked up a little bit of Actually and Frank, so just the two brown shades, mixing it gently, not a whole lot, and then just kind of dust it on the outer corners, like very lightly. It's gonna look really dark, but everything's gonna get blended out in the end anyway, so I'm not that pressed. I'll usually try to wing it out a little bit and then just like, just blend it until it's not quite perceivable. And I like to blend the edges with my fingers because I'm not good at using brushes. The brushes are just better for pigment, pigment application. See how my eyes don't recede into my face because I'm Asian. <laughs> yeah, if you have actual structure, you probably don't need to do this as much. But this is this is my little trick to, to add a little depth to my own eyes because um, I lack that. I'm also realizing that I forgot to do my eyelid tape. Usually for dude cosplays, I'll put on eyelid tape. So this is another thing I swear by. I used to try to use double sided eyelid tape to hold my eyelids like the fold where I wanted it to be. So it's a single sided eyelid tape. I've struggled over the years to get my eyelids to look the way I want them to with double-sided eyelid tape because I thought that was the way. But it turns out that single-sided eyelid tape is much better if you can get the right brand. And then it's just a question of like figuring out your placement. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but I don't have double eyelids. You see how there's like three or four layers to my eyelids? So I actually have to be like really tactical about where this ends up. Okay, you see how it's like a lot more prominent than before now? Like compare this one with this one. There's a pretty obvious difference. The goal is really, I just really want an eyelid fold that is like visible. You ever like trying to do your eyeliner and then every time you try to, you like mess up a little, you're like, oh, that's okay, I can fix it. And then every time you try to fix it, it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until finally you're like, damn, my eyeliner covers my entire eyelid. That is the makeup experience. Okay, we've put our eyelid tape on. I find that it helps to even it out. Having a higher crease helps me show off the makeup a little bit more. That's my key prerogative. Because why put a bunch of products on your face if it won't even show up, you know? I always do the harder eye first so I can try to match it with the easier one. Yes! The whole concept of having a harder eye and an easier eye is so interesting to me also. Like the fact that it's just a common thing. Like everyone has a harder eye and an easier eye. One eye cooperates and the other eye fucking hates you. This is just law. This is makeup law. So the eyelid tape is able to hold eye makeup normally. Almost normally, not quite. You see how it's kind of standing out? But since when my eyes are open, you can't really tell it's there, it doesn't bother me that much. I will also additionally try to increase, so like I can't really do a cut crease, but what I can do is darken the crease a little bit. I'm really bad at this. Some cosplayers are really good at it, but I usually will take my deepest brown and then I just like go over the crease with it because I want to deepen the crease as much as I can. I just want it to be like a very obvious eyelid crease. Um, a lot of these are things that don't matter on camera as much. It's really like when you're going to a convention or like a hangout or whatever, and you have to see people in person. Like a lot of this stuff doesn't even show up on camera. So I don't know why I'm doing convention makeup in front of y'all, but habits, old habits die hard, man. What can I say? Is the camera mirrored or is he left-handed? Oh, Fluffy, I am left-handed. Oh, you noticed. Yeah, I'm left-handed. I was born left-handed. I don't know if this is an Asian thing, but my Asian parents uh, forced me to not use my left hand growing up. I was basically like beaten until I used my right hand. Thankfully, I retained a lot of reflexes, I guess. And so I kind of naturally still use my left hand for a lot of things, even though I was beaten as a child. So I write with my right hand. I will do a little bit of highlight. One of my favorite colors on this Give It To Me Straight palette is this gold one, which is up front. With shimmer shadows, I usually just use my fingers because look at how prominent it shows up. Brushes just don't transfer shimmer, shimmers and metallics quite as well. So this is a this is a metallic one, and I'm just gonna pat it on the top. I just feel like Jolie is extra and deserves that little bit of extra oomph, you know? Trophy husband deserves the best. I usually will pat it on and not worry about the blending. Interestingly, you may find that over time, your makeup blends it itself. <laughs> I also like to take this same gold color to highlight my everything else because normal highlighter just doesn't pop as much as I want it to. So I often go on the cheekbones um, and then I like highlighting the point of my nose right here. A little bit of Cupid's bow glow. Yeah, so a lot of this doesn't apply to cosplay, but I like to do it. So I'm just showing you guys. Okay, it's eyeliner time, y'all. I'm kind of scared. I try to do waterproof everything, especially in cosplay, because when you have contacts in, it's easy for your eyes to water. So best to prevent that as much as possible. Let me just check it really quick. So I always have a wet wipe ready or a baby wipe. I usually start in the outer corner. For dudes, I usually don't wing upwards as much. I just wing out. Okay, so that's like basic eyeliner, right? That's like normie eyeliner. Now, the cosplay edition, okay? As a cosplayer, I've investigated, you know, eyelid shapes a lot and I've done a lot of research on this stuff. Something you may not have noticed about yourself or other people is that some of us have tapered eyelids as opposed to parallel eyelids. Notice how my eyelid folds over here. They fold over, do you see? It folds over a little bit. 
So my eyelid's kind of like tucking itself in on the inside over here. As opposed to, I'm gonna lift my like nose bridge fake really quick. So if I lift it, you see how like you can see a little bit more of the tear ducts and the eyelid crease becomes parallel with the rest of the eye. That, those are parallel eyelids. So because I have tapered eyelids, the eyeliner line over here, if I were to draw to the tear duct, it would not show up because it would get tucked behind the skin. So the cosplay hack for Asians like me who have tapered eyelids is we just draw over the fold. And it's gonna look really stupid, but I promise it'll look great on camera. You see how there's a line and the line looks pretty consistent through the whole eyelid right now? If I close my eyes, what do you think this is gonna look like? You see where that eyeliner goes? It's just like, woo, off into the distance. This is this is two pieces of eyeliner. This is not. Anyways, moral of the story is don't close your eyes when you're cosplaying. <laughs> just keep them open the whole time. So I'm gonna try to smooth this out as much as I can, just so it looks a little bit less stupid when I close my eyes. But like, no matter what, this is gonna look pretty dumb when I close my eyes. In the case of Zhong Li, I will add a bottom line. I think for cosplay, I often do it because it gives you a little bit more of like a fierce look which a lot of the anime men that I cosplay, since I don't really do shultas, most of the men I cosplay are really like, eh, so. Okay, I'm gonna do the other eye now. This seems roughly correct. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh, that did not go well. Look at how blunt that is. Well, time to show you guys another trick of mine then. When I fuck up, <laughs> I like to take a Q-tip and some lotion. This is my moisturizer, CeraVe. I pump a little bit on the back of my hand. And then instead of using makeup remover, which makes it really hard to apply makeup on it afterwards, and then you have to like add concealer and skin makeup and stuff, I just roll the tip of the Q-tip in the lotion a little bit. And then it'll take pretty much anything. It'll just take it right off. And you have a lot more like control in this case. You could use makeup remover, but again, it's gonna like mess up a lot of like the other stuff you've done. So this kind of limits, it's like damage control, you know? It like limits the range of disaster. And you can very like sort of just go into the one part that you fucked up. This is especially great when you're fixing under eye mess ups. Let me not embarrass myself this time. That's not too bad. That was okay, all right, so let's continue. Ow, I just stabbed myself in the eye. We're doing okay. We are a-okay. We're doing good. You gotta be encouraging, okay? Self-love. Self-love and appreciation. Encourage yourself with verbal affirmations while you do your cosplay makeup. Oh, I'm doing great. I'm gonna look so fine. I'm going to be the best trophy husband. I believe in my Zhongli abilities. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to replace this eyelid tape. It's not at all doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, you guys ready? Let's peel it off. Eh. You guys see the spot in the eye makeup where the tape used to be? <laughs> so my tip for anyone who's trying to figure out where to put their eyelid tape, and you're like, you have no idea and it doesn't seem to be cooperating, is to try moving it inward and outward instead of just up and down. I think most people try to do up and down, especially if you have tapered eyelids, it can interact very differently with the taper on the inside. So that's a really good way to like try other shapes and tr try to see like what shapes you can get your eyelid to fold into. So that's most of the eye makeup. And now for the fun part. You guys ready for the fun part of the eye makeup? This is my favorite part. Okay, so this is kind of embarrassing to admit. I have an eyeshadow palette. I bought this in 2014. You are not supposed to use an eyeshadow palette for that long, but it just has so many important colors on it that I haven't been able to replace. So it's still here. The way you prevent yourself from giving yourself like an infection is to spray it with rubbing alcohol every once in a while, which degrades the quality of the palette, but I would rather have a lower quality palette than kill myself with an eye infection. So um, it's super expired. Do not do this, guys. I'm not showing you this palette. Actually, I am. It's called Sex Bomb. <laughs> the reason I, I love this palette is because of this red and this black. It's just, it's hard to find eyeshadow palettes nowadays that have some have red this vibrant and a black this deep. I love it. I sanitize it once in a while, but it's probably not the best thing to uh, keep using. And yet here we are, here we are. Okay, you guys ready for the red? Don't that look so vibrant? I love it. I like to blend my reds into the top a little bit too. Again, most of this is gonna get hidden under the wig, so you can really go crazy with your cosplay eye makeup because most of it isn't even gonna show up. So just go wild. It's gonna look stupid while you do it. After the fact, no one's even gonna know. Like this looks really like badass and like just deep, and really exaggerated right now. Won't even be able to see it in a hot second. You guys ready to see me look bald? Probe, are you here? This is for you. <laughs> Actually, I've never mentioned this on stream before. I have an undercut. Disclaimer, my undercut is very grown out right now. It's about an inch long because I can't decide if I wanna grow it out. I'm currently in that mode of like vacillating and like not sure, like, do I wanna grow it out? Do I not wanna grow it out? I'm not too sure, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. So it looks a little shaggy, very ugly right now. 
that's just a heads up. But I do have an undercut. You see over here, it's like shorter. So um, the last time I cut this was a month ago, but usually this is like really bald. Like I usually, I usually go in and shave it like every two weeks or so. So because I have an undercut, the way I do my wig hair preparation is I like go straight down the middle. This is just a middle part. If you guys ever wanted to see me with a middle part, this is what I look like. Ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong, ding, 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 ding. Okay, anyways, I go down the middle and then I do what I call the, the Chinese farm girl look, which is where you take your hair, you split it down the middle, and then you give yourself pigtails. <laughs> Here's my Chinese farm girl look. They got me so good. Oh, Frost! I, this is a really embarrassing, can I, guys, no, no, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm the, hmm. not a Chinese farm girl. I'm just, uh, I just have really heavy eye makeup today. <laughs> so these are called wig clips. They're specifically designed for wigs. I just use them because they have like this comb-like structure, you see, there's like combs in it. So it holds hair back like this part a lot better than normal bobby pins do. So I will usually try to pin this part of my hair to the wig caps using these wig clip things. I, do, I don't think that's the correct way to use these things, but I, you know what? I'm just, I'm making it up as I go along and I'm doing my best and that's what matters. We're on an important point. I don't know if any of y'all in chat here are like wear lace front wigs, um, but a big thing I learned from like black women actually who wear a lot of lace front wigs is how to secure your wig net so they don't like slide all over the place and still hold your wig steady. And there's a lace front technique where basically, so part of it is like, th this will give you a headache if you put it right on your hairline. So you push this back a little bit. And so to secure it there, you use this thing, this like elastic band. All I'm saying is if black women give you advice, you listen. It's like the one demographic I'm always gonna, always gonna listen to their advice. Thank you for making so many A plus tutorials because I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Okay, this is actually not too bad. Looks like they have some nice under layers. I quite like how natural the colors look here. That's good. Okay, so let's, let's just tackle the bangs today on stream, yeah? At this point, I start to separate out the strands to figure out like where I wanna apply my scissors. His hair sweeps to his right, so it has to go this way. And then he kind of does the like, that like anime bang M shape. He's got some shorter wisps over here and then kind of a longer wisp on his Right side. Oh, that's why it's so long here, because it's supposed to be longer here. All right, let's straighten this out, okay? Because it's like curling and it's really annoying me, so. The trick to styling wigs with heat is that the heat application itself is not when the shape sets. The shape actually sets while the fibers cool. If you're doing this and then going like, ah, oh, damn, like how come like I tug on it to straighten it out, but it's not holding its shape. It's because you have to hold it into the shape you want it to be in while it's cooling. This is also why people often will use heat gloves because holding these fibers can get really hot and you can burn yourself and I have done it. That is actually also true of real hair fiber. You know how a lot of people will like, after they curl their hair, they kind of they kind of cradle it in their hand a little bit. Like you do the curl loop and then you hold the curls like this up. You're doing that because you want it to set in that position and then you let it go after it has cooled down and that's how it holds its shape. Okay, and then we got this little hair dick, <laughs> wig dick. The bangs are always the hardest part for cosplay in my opinion, to get them to look natural. Okay, <laughs> it, that's what it is, it's a wig dick. Is this not a wig dick? Anime hair is shaped such that there is a wig dick right down the middle. Am I not completely correct? Did I stutter? Did I lie? No, it's literally, literally what it looks like. I'm gonna trim this down a little bit. Oh my God, I feel, I feel scared because this is layered and so the colors matter. So it actually does matter which layers I'm trimming down. And then to get the bottom layers of color to show up, I'm gonna grab the top layers over here that are darker and trim those shorter. Otherwise the bottom layer is not gonna show up. I definitely also over trimmed a little bit down here. Nah, it's okay. Happy accidents, happy accidents, y'all. As our overlord and role model, Bob Ross used to say, happy accidents. I am going to apply some heat to it to try to get it to sit down a little more, but most likely because of the thickness of the wig cap around here, I'm going to have to just tape it down to my face, which, spoiler alert, cosplayers tape everything to their face. If the wig seems like it's holding its position suspiciously well, that's because it's glued and or taped to the face, possibly both. Cosplayers are masters of like faking everything, okay? Why do you think these wig sides are so long? Because we've got to hide our, our jaw lines. My cosplay fakery is complete. <gasps> wait, we forgot a crucial portion of the eye makeup. I didn't do the bottom. I usually will wait until the wig goes on. I also usually don't do my eyebrows before. Maybe I should wipe these eyebrows off. Should I wipe these eyebrows off? I'm gonna wipe the eyebrows off. We're gonna try to do a redo because these eyebrows are like normie people eyebrows. All right, so the key with dude cosplays is you want your eyebrows to be straight and low. 
My eyebrows, unfortunately, do sit very high on my face, and the only way to lower them a lot is for me to like glue them down and then tape them over. If this were a photo shoot, I would consider it because I would have time to like Photoshop it afterwards so that it doesn't look as yucky. Instead, I'm just gonna try to fill it in sort of like closer to the low bit of the brow and like try to bring it down a little bit. And it's okay. I feel like a lot of cosplayers are scared to do bold eyebrows. You can do bold eyebrows. You'll be fine. If you weren't doing this for stream, how long do you think it would take you to get into full cosplay? Full cosplay, high effort for a convention where I have to look presentable like IRL in front of people. I usually try to allocate two and a half hours to get in cosplay. Especially, I will say like female cosplays take longer to get into because the ladies have to put falsies on and falsies are like such a roulette. Like you really don't know what's gonna go wrong with your falsies. And let's put the wig back in place. I think I will spray this slightly so it holds a little better. I'm stuck using my tiny Tresem like travel size hairspray because this got to be one is like, like, let me show you, okay. Nothing comes out. Something is wrong with that. Got to be glued? Yeah, it glued itself shut, Jesus. I obsess over the wig for a really long time. Like I will often spend like twice as much time on the wig as I do on the rest of the cosplay because I feel like the wig is even more important than the makeup. I'm gonna do the thing that I told you, I was gonna, I said I was gonna do earlier, which is the bottom eyeliner. It's honestly a pretty careless line. It just kind of goes along my tear line, tear bag. It's just like that, just like a straight line. Oh, oh, UD selection resubbed. Wow, how shy, so I'm gay, so I'm gay. Yo tambien. I got you, fam. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try to smooth it over with some eyeshadow instead. Okay, see, now no one can even tell that it happened because it's got brown eyeshadow over it. But you see how like once you add that line, it's like a lot more bold of a look. It's like a very present. Yes, I have a bottom lash line and it is here and you can see it. Okay, I think it's time to get in the cosplay. So when I do cost tests or like if I'm just shooting, like if I'm not at a convention, I don't bind because if I put a sports bra on, this is how flat I am. It's a fucking, this is a washboard. Like with a sports bra on, that, those are my lumps. That, that could be a man boob for all you know. Like I could have really amazing pecs. You don't know. <laughs> Y'all, this, this piece is really interesting. Like it's supposed to be like a vest thing and then like an overcoat, but this all came in one piece. So the vest part is attached like to the coat part. It's all sewn together here. All right, the pants are on. You like this crotch shot? Hey, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, a ding, ding, a ding, 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 ding. Okay, I'm gonna stop. I promise I'll stop. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Cosplay's not consent. <laughs> this is the hardest part. I've tried to put this on once before and I was just so like lost. I'm gonna stab myself just trying to get in cosplay all the time. You think it takes him this long to get ready in the morning? Like I sure as hell hope not. What's your problem with Toma? I'd watch the clips. What is my problem with Toma? What is my problem with Toma? My problem with Toma is... <laughs> <laughs> My problem with Toma is he's the kind of character that ruins real men. Let's put it that way. Oh God, why isn't it going in? I think I broke it, guys. I broke it. No, why? How'd that happen? It broke. It completely snapped off. The pin just snapped off. What am I supposed to do now? F. <laughs> Learn how to weld. I can find a bobby pin. All right, y'all, my hands are clean, so I'm actually just gonna put my contacts in in front of you. I like to use um, Airily Daily Contacts. I don't know, when I do the math of like how often I actually wear color contacts, it's not that often, and it actually ends up that the daily contacts are more worth it. I also think the Airily Dailies are just more vibrant. See how vibrant that is? I feel like only the Airily Dailies look this good. All right, contacts are in. <gasps> I just realized something, guys. I never did my mascara, which means I never did my mascara, which means that since I put my mascara in my bra at the beginning of this stream, they're still in there. <laughs> Ball can pull an electric sword out of her boobs. You know what I can do? Mascara, bitch. Can you pull mascara out of your boobs? I didn't fucking think so. Mascara Archon. <laughs> I can't believe I just put it in there and forgot about it. This is not the first time I've done that. I once completely forgot to apply mascara or like decided not to in the middle of getting my like normie makeup on to go like hang out with my friends or whatever. And then like halfway through the day while we were out and about in the city, I uh, realized <laughs> there was a little friend I had in my bra. <laughs> so, <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna take a safety pin and try to safety pin this guy. It's not gonna look too great, but we can ignore that. Just pretend, pretend you do not see, okay? The buttons are on, they're not super aligned, but 
that's okay. Um, I think I need to take this cosplay in a bit because I have a lot of like empty space. And uh, you know, we all know Zhongli is a is a snatched waist. All right, there's the earring. I wish it were not on the left side, honestly. I, my good side is my right side. Do you guys also have a good side and a bad side? I feel like most people do. So like, look at my right side, right? It's got like a really angular jawline. Like it kind of just, it's slim and it goes right up. That's my right side jawline. My left side is a lot wider. Like it goes down before it goes up, kind of. So I like my right side better. That's it fam, we did it. How do I look? <laughs> With the antenna and everything. I really, I gotta fix this. I don't like the antenna. Oh, Mitchell wants a kaju performance. Mitchell, what do you want on the kaju? What can the Geo Archon do for you? Oh, Wex Incognito. Yeah, let's go play. <laughs> Wish I could keep a straight face. Wish I were capable of that. That would be real nice. I also realized I didn't put my gloves on, guys. This is the sexiest part. You guys ready? Mmm, what those fingers do? Throw rocks, probably. <laughs> lip bite? You, you want the lip bite? What those fingers do though. Hey girl A, you come here often? <laughs> she! <laughs> Are you lost, baby girl? Hold still. <laughs> Kevin Nguyen Zhongli. Hey. <laughs> Do you have a pole arm? I, I don't. I used to do staff in, in Wushu. I used to do Wushu in college. I don't have my staff anymore. Is there something else I could spin? I could show you guys how to flower a staff. Hold on. I don't have a fucking Vortex Vanquisher, but I do have a curtain rod, so let's do this. Hey, haven't done Wushu in years, but I still got it. Now you need is the death meteor. God, I wish I could just summon. Cause that would be such a good way to solve all of your problems, all of your mortal travails. Simply summon a massive rock out of the sky, slam it into whoever's causing you trouble. Done. You don't have to worry about anything. That's it. It's over. No more problem. Squashed. So easy. 